Hey everyone, my name is Dpad Gamer, and since Ukulele's E3 trailer was just released this morning, I'm going to go through scene by scene and detail everything there is, since I know I missed quite a lot on the first viewing. Let's begin. The first shot we get is of the duo Yuka the Chameleon and Lele the Bat running towards the camera. Next, they jump up some platforms to stand before Nimble the Cloud. We know that Nimble will challenge the duo to races, as we'll see later on, and appears multiple times throughout the game. We see the duo using a rolling ability. It's clear that the green bar is being drained, so this is likely their energy meter. There's also a sneaky bucket of colored paint to the right at the top of the ramp. They collect some golden quills, which acts as this game's currency, and the duo floats through the air, and when they pass through the ring, which has eyes on it, classic rare, the platform ahead materializes. This looks like a race or obstacle course of some sort, since we can see the next ring and platform appear after passing through the first one. There's also a yellow bead to the right, and at least two more that can be seen up ahead near the next ring. The shot cuts to them landing on a completely different platform, jump off, perform a quick double jump, and then they land to collect a molecule-looking collectible. Yuka is seen using a fire breath attack to take out a few enemies called Keith the Minion. Notice the glowing red tips on Yuka's head and tail. This will be relevant later on. In the cauldron we can see Clara the Skeleton Girl, and it's possibly the first time that the duo meets her. Now we see Kartos from behind, who is a friendly minecart that'll assist the duo. We can see the words Kartos, Haulage Co. From the Platonics February 10th, 2016 post on Kartos, we know that Yuka will be taking advantage of Kartos and his services as he is for hire at various stages in the game. And why not? After all, his slogan is, Minecart is hair cart. I probably butchered that pronunciation, sorry. The next two shots are from a 2D side-scrolling perspective of Yuka jumping with Kartos to avoid obstacles. This reminds me of the minecart sections from Donkey Kong Country, which is likely the inspiration for this character. Then we see on the left Dr. Puzz, the half-human, half-octopus supporting character, and the duo walks onto a glowing platform. They are transformed into a flower, which I think is shaped a bit like a ray gun. This is pretty clear information that Puzz will be this game's mumbo, providing the duo with transformations throughout the game. Next we see Trouser, a supporting character which is a snake that wears pants. He is a business snake whose career never took off, as described in the May 11, 2015 update. He acts as this game's jam jars, teaching you new moves in return for money, in this game being quills, as mentioned before. The duo then slide down an icy ramp. In the next shot, we are in an unnamed icy world. What is key here is that we can see Laylee flying, gaining height and distance while the energy bar drains. Laylee shoots out a subsonic blast of some kind, draining a chunk of energy and knocking out a few surrounding enemies. Also, that igloo in the background could be a nod to Boggy's igloo from Banjo Kazooie, which first appeared in Freeze Easy Peak. The duo perform a ground pound, triggering the cannon to fire out a cannonball to destroy the cloud face block, which earlier was shown as being an obstacle in the cart section. We get a quick look at this large orange enemy, who appears to be a larger version of Keith the Minion. He doesn't go down on one hit, instead retaliating with a spinning attack. He is likely similar to the gorillas that appeared in Grintilda's lair, which grew stronger and took more hits the farther in the game you went. Yuka swims underwater in what seems to be an industrial area. In the background, there are three orange honeycomb containers, obviously a nod to Banjo-Kazooie's energy system of honeycombs. Next, Yuka uses his tongue to reach out and grab a cannonball, which changes his color and I can only assume makes him heavier, allowing the duo to pass the gust of wind without being pushed around. We see the orange dinosaur Retro 64 us in his arcade. We know that he is the guardian of the arcade machines hidden on each level. Each world has at least one secret arcade game, and completing it grants you another pagey, this game's jiggy. The duo stealths past what appears to be a turret, Yuka making use of his chameleon powers which again drain their energy. Yuka shoots out a few snowballs to dislodge a red ruby from the statue. Again we can see the glowing tips of his head which this time are of course blue for the ice power. We can see the duo racing after a purple character going through the same rings we saw earlier. It's tough to tell for sure, but it seems that they are chasing after Nimble who this time is glowing purple. The duo try rolling up a winding icy path only to fall off. This is a super quick look at their health bar, which in this game is represented by purple butterflies. The duo run and jump off a cliff and fly towards the camera. In the background we can see this is the same area from the start of the trailer with the three platforms and nimble the cloud. We get a beautiful wide shot of what I can only assume is the first world, which looks quite large, and the logo appears. We know that the game is going to be released on Xbox One, PS4, and Steam, but more importantly that it's going to be released in the first quarter of 2017. This last the scene starts with a transition that is classic banjo kazooie fashion, and we see that the duo are reclining on a rock. There are a few things here. I like how Laylee's blanket is so much bigger than Yuka's. Around them we can see two books, one of them being pants and why you should wear them, the multicolored paint bucket from earlier, a chest in the far background, two drinks, one sporting a jiggy on the rim, and a pair of yellow sunglasses, which are most likely Yuka's if the size is any indication. Laylee talks first, the dialogue box and voice are just like banjo kazooie, which I love. She breaks down the fourth wall, as is traditional with these kind of games, and bashes 
is the trailer, asking, where was the brown level? This is likely a jab at modern games, since there's a trend these days of games being dull and brown. Yuka gives the developers the benefit of the doubt, saying there's still a few months of work left. Laylee says that it'll probably have car sections by then, which is a jab at Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, the platforming game which eventually was released with cars as the focus. The scene ends with another ukulele shaped transition, and the logo of Team 17 appears, who are developing the PS4 and Xbox One versions of the game, while Playtonic works on the PC and Wii U versions. And that's it! This trailer had a lot of great stuff in it, and this video took a lot of work. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, it'd help me out a lot if you could like the video and subscribe if you want more of my content. Feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of ukulele, because I know I'm excited. And no doubt, I probably missed something, so if I did, let me know down there as well. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.